Thank you. So I have 30 minutes, right? Three hours. Huh? Three hours. Three hours, OK. Close the doors. OK. So this is John to work with uh, Sarvar Patel and Kevin Yeo, who is there from Google. Um, OK. So oh, I, I think I'll go a little bit quicker than I, I was expecting, because most of the concepts and definitions were, uh, were discussed in the previous talks. OK. So uh, I'm going to prove lower bounds in the cell probe model. This is a model uh, due to Yao from uh, the 70s or the 80s, a long time ago, where it sees the memory as a sequence of cells of a fixed number of bits, W. And um, the cost is just accessing the SL. And it costs one, direct access. And all other computation is for free. So this is a very good model for lower bounds. And this was extended to oblivious cell problem model by Larsen and Nielsen last year in crypto. And this was cast in a client server uh, setting. The client outsources the storage of a data structure to honest but curious server. And then the client performs a sequence of data structures operation, operation one, operation two, operation L, which consists in a accessing cells in the cell memory, uh, in cells in the server memory. The client has limited private local memory that can be used to, to keep keys or to keep some cells, some data from the data structure, whatever it wants. And the server observes the access pattern uh, for each operation. And uh, OK, yes, we have commas. So we are not in Pavel's model. We are with delimiters. So there is a view of the server for, uh, um, for operation number one which is view DS op one, which consists of all the cells that were uh, probed during the perf uh, while performing operation one, comma, and all the others, OK? And uh, this is a passive server. It performs no computation. It just receives, oh, give me cell number 17. Here it is. Give me, you know, write this in cell number 21, and that's it. And all operations are performed online. And uh, and this is the definition, uh, the security definition. It's uh, indistinguishability based, and it's very weak because um, it just assumes that there is a, a statistical distance that is at most one quarter. But this is a lower bound talk, so this is fine. Uh, and this was applied to the very simple and basic data structure problem, which was called, the, it's the ORAM, which was called the array maintenance problem where you just have an array with n slots, and you can only do read and write with the obvious semantics, right? And this was the lower bound. Uh, B, so if you have n B bit slots, uh, you need, uh, essentially you need B over W just to read it, and log n times B over C is the overhead, where n is the, is the size of the array, B is number of bits in each entry of the array, and sees the client memory. And um, this is for uh, PPT. And it's important these are for only online read and write operations with passive server, because weakening in any way this lower bound uh, will cause troubles. This is a Boilnauer paper from 15, which says that if you have offline read and write and you can prove a lower bound, then you shouldn't, talk, you know, you shouldn't uh, sell it as a lower bound on uh, on ORAM, but you should sell it as a lower bound on uh, integer circuit sorting because this is an open problem in complexity. And this was uh, more recently by Weiss and Vix. Uh, if you just have now, if you have online, but you just have reads, this will imply a lower bound either for uh, integer circuit sorting or for local decodable codes, both open problems in, uh, in complexity. OK. Uh, all, uh, the lower bound by Larsen and Nielsen was in the information uh, transfer, uh, was using the information transfer technique by Patrascu and Demain. And uh, 
Essentially, it was something like three steps, which we are going to reproduce for, for our lower bound, but we'll have some technical difficulties that we have to address. Okay, essentially, they have a way of assigning probes to nodes of what is called the information tree, okay? And we have seen this like in Kevin's talk and also in Casper's talk. Then we show that for most nodes, uh, there exists a hard distribution specific for that node of the tree, such that uh, that node gets lots of probes. And to do this, we just do a coding argument, uh, a compression argument. And then we ob invoke obliviousness to show that, okay, since we cannot distinguish between the various distributions, then uh, all nodes must have, a, must have lots of probes assigned to it. And since we assign the probe so that bullet number one, each probe is assigned to at most one node, number of probes assigned to, verti to, to nodes is a lower bound on the number of probes. Okay. Uh, obliviousness is, is a very strong notion. And um, in fact, it hides the type of operation. It hides the parameters of the operations, which is a good thing the content of the array, if we do a write, or uh, uh, the, the actual entry of the array that we're uh, interested in for read and writes. And it also hides the repetition pattern. And this is something we're going to, to, to think about. It's the repetition pattern. It's something like, you know, we want to, dis uh, we want to hide the fact that operation uh, 15 and 34 were to the same entry in the array. And only the number of operations is leaked. In, some, uh, in several applications, uh, in data structure, in oblivious data structure, we are willing to sacrifice security uh, to get some, uh, some efficiency. And we allow, you know, uh, we allow some information to be, to be leaked. One way of weakening the definition is differential privacy, but we had the whole talk by, by, by Kevin on this, so I'm going to yeah, this is the result. I'm going to, to skip this. And then I'm going to the leakage cell probe model, which is the model I'm working on. So, so we have a leakage function that assigns to each sequence operation the leakage of the sequence operation that is, um, that is seen as the leakage from the first operation, the leakage from the second, the leakage from the last operation. And then we require that two views of the server to be uh, statistically close, you know, close up to one quarter, only if, only for two sequences, O and O prime, that have the same leakage. Because if they have different leakages, th since the server is going to see the leakage, if they have different leakages, of course it's going to, uh, to distinguish the two. But if the, so we require that the server shouldn't be able to distinguish between the two operations that have the same leakage. Essentially that the leakage is, is all the server gets from observing the work. Uh, yeah, I can have, but uh, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, but this is uh, this is a lower bound. So this is the, you know this is the weakest possible uh, security definition for which the proof will go through. You, you know this one quarter is ridiculous. Not no, I'm not moving. Oh, okay, of course not. I don't want to be reported. Yeah, but because uh, uh, leakage, uh, it's each operation, and uh, it's something like about the current operation, and the previous operation, how the current okay. operation relates to the previous operations. Uh, you'll see a couple of examples. And okay, so this is the definition, and um, like Oblivious considers a very simple leakage that only consists of the length of the sequence. Okay, so it's a, it's a special case. Okay, we are going to, um, this, uh, this lower bound applies to, to more than one data structure. Uh, I'm going to, for the sake of concreteness, to discuss about multi-maps. So these are data structures that maintain collection of pairs. One is a key and the other is a, a tuple of values. 
uh, V1 to VL and under two operations, two very basic operations. One is a uh, um, get key, meaning that uh, I, I say, okay, just give me the tuple of uh, values that, are, that is associated with key. And then we had add key and V, which just adds a value V to the current tuple associated with a key, okay? It's very basic and it's uh, very simple. So this is a special case of structured encryption. It's a concept introduced by Chase and Camara uh, a few years ago. And it has some relation to ORAM in the sense that ORAM, uh, all tuples have length one. It, they only have one value, like a, a B bit block. And the keys are, the key is an integer in one to n. Here the key is from a key universe. And we can over, in ORAM you can overwrite the value associated, the one value associated with the key, with an integer, and here we can only add. Add is like append. Append, 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 yes, append. So you start from an empty tuple and then you append things. Okay, how expenses are uh, encrypted multimaps? Okay, that depends on the leakage function. Like if you are not interested in, uh, in security, then, uh, you know, you just look up at your uh, uh, data structure books and you go into proceedings and we found like Beam and Fitch have a log n, log log n over triple log. There is the perfect hashing by Fredman, Komlos and Semeredi, which is constant. This is all very good. On the other end of the spectrum, if you, if you only want to leak the number of operations that you are performing, Oh, uh, then uh, you have a log n overhead, and you just use ORAM. Uh, this is something like, if you have a log n or ORAM, uh, it's a folklore construction, uh, and uh, you can just you know, put all the data in an ORAM, and then you, you download it. Okay, so the question is what happens in between, right? And where, actually the question is where ex exactly, uh, what is the point where that causes the jump from constant to log n, essentially. So what is the leakage, the minimal leakage that causes us to pay log n? Okay, so let's start from constant and let's add some security, just, you know, just a little bit. And this is a very simple approach that works for encrypting multimaps. You just encrypt it. Value, you have values and keys, all values you encrypt. You have your secret key in CPA and you encrypt it. And all keys, you just hash it, okay? Or key dash, okay, just to be secure, okay? And then uh, the server doesn't even know that you're doing this because the server just will see, you know, some funny looking uh, values and, and keys, but okay, that's not his business. What is the leakage associated with this? The leakage associated with uh, taking, for example, perfect hashing and doing this uh, very simple hashing and uh, encryption. It's, uh, uh, it's what I call the global equality and repetition pattern, which is something like this. It's uh, a EP for equality pattern. EPIJ is one if and only if K KI is equal to KJ. KI is the key that was used, that was the, the input for the ith operation and j was the key used for the jth operation. So essentially I'm leaking here um, if uh, you know, like operation 17, operation 34 were on the same key, okay? I'm not leaking what the key is and you can see this because since it's uh, hashing is deterministic, uh, even if it's keyed, you know, like uh, if I perform two operations on the same key, the, the service is going to see the same hash, okay? But it doesn't see anything. It do actually sees the length of the tuple associated with each key, and it sees the type of operations because, you know, perfect hashing, uh, you know, the dynamic version of perfect hashing will have different algorithms for uh, adding, uh, for insertion and, uh, and lookup. Okay, so that's all, that's all I want. Okay, so this I can do with constant overhead or uh, log log n over triple log, like it's something. Very good, okay. So we're not at the boundary yet. So I'm asking, oh, let's decouple the quality pattern. 
So now this is a global equality pattern because it doesn't distinguish if operation I and operation J are get and add, or they're both get, or they're both adds. Just says, oh, because he sees the same key. Uh, he sees the same hash value. Okay, so I'm asking, okay, what happens if I decouple the equality pattern? In the sense that now I have a new leakage, I call it D for the couple, the quality pattern, EP, IJ, which is one if and only if operation I and operation J, they work on the same key and they are the same type of operation. They are both gets or they are both adds. Okay? So suppose I, I want this, this leakage. Okay? I just want to say, I don't want to leak if, you know, number 13 was a get and number 17 was an add, and they were on the same key, okay? I just want just a little bit of security more, just one, uh, one notch, uh, which I say, oh, I don't care if, you know, I can, the server can identify all the gets that were for the same keys, or all the adds that were for the same key, but it, I don't want the, the server to be able to correlate gets and adds that were on the same key, okay? And, uh, and uh, okay, so if we just do this little step, we are already in the, in the log n field, in the log n territory. We are going to prove log n, okay? And now I'm going to show you how. So in a sense, we, I think we, we identify the transition from constant overhead to log n overhead. And this is due to the decoupling of the quality pattern. Okay, I'm going to do this since, you know, uh, for technical uh, pride, I can do this with something that is a leakage function even more. Like, essentially, if you think of it, once we decouple um, uh, leakage from add and key, I can, for example, for one of the two operations, like for uh, get, I can actually leak the key, and then for add, I can only uh, uh, leak the add the quality pattern. That's what I'm doing here. Like, once you decouple, I don't care. Yes? If you only allow get, is it like searchable If I only allow get, then I can use cuckoo hashing, and then uh, it's constant. And I can do it, right? If I, if I only have get, I cannot decouple, first of all, and then it's very easy. Uh, like cuckoo hashing, it's two probes. So there is no lower bound to, with this leakage. Okay, so um, I identify two leakage functions which are even more, if, a little bit leakier than the, the decoupling, in which one, in one of the two, I, I agree, it's a bit silly because either you leak the hash or you leak the quality pattern or you actually leak the key, it's not much, but this is what I'm doing. And so for one operation, I actually leak the key. For the other operation, I leak the quality pattern for that operation. And of course, I can do the dual leakage function too. And now I'm going to work on this one. This is a decoupled uh, equality, pa uh, equality pattern for the two operations. I'm going to prove that you need log n. And this is the, the theorem informal that encrypted maps, which are LG and LA, uh, secure, insecure. They have log n expected amortized overhead, which means that a sequence of operations that returns in total R responses will require omega R times log n. And this is tight again because folklore, you can use or arm as pen log n for each. Okay, so we want to use the information technique of uh, Patrascu in the main, and, but we, ha we have two things that we have to take into account. So one is that we have a weaker security notion which technically it will uh, manifest itself this, in the fact that we can only invoke obliviousness for distributions, for sequences which have the same leakage. As opposed, uh, like if, for example, if you see the Larsen Nielsen uh, information transfer proof, they could invoke um, obliviousness on all sequences of the same length because that was their leakage. Our leakage is more. So it's, uh, you know, keys for all the gets, and it's a quality pattern. So we have to make sure that when we use, like, uh, various distributions for various nodes, they all have the same leakage, okay? 
And also in our data structure problems, entry and values are not random. This is a, a, a also a problem. Uh, we cannot assume that you know values are random. So we are going, and we need some source of randomness on which to base our compression compression al, uh, argument, right? Okay, so we need to find a different source of randomness. These are the two main technical obstacles, and I'll, I'll see. Okay, very good. So I'm going to define, high, I'm going to use Yaus minimax. So instead of having worst case on the operation, I'm going to have worst case on, on the distributions. Um, and I'm going to identify one hard distribution, which is, okay, it's exactly this. Uh, so I have this joint. I have these joint sets, so all sets of values and keys, they're all pairwise disjoint, okay? And I, I have phase zero where I build the first instance where I, I just add for each key of these sets of keys, K1, G, K2, G, K, P, G, where P is N to the one minus epsilon. I just add all the, all the k values, k is a parameter, from a set v0. So after phase zero, I have uh, this number of keys, they all have the same tuple, the k values from v0. And then uh, I have p more phases, and in each phase, I have a different set of, oops, I have a different set of, uh, they told me not to do this, I have a different set of keys, and for each key, I'm going to pick a random subset from a set of values, and the set of values is different from, for each phase. And then I'm going to do add, and then I'm going to do a subphase where I'm going to ask for each key, I'm going to have a get, and this is the key from the first uh, phase. Okay, so this is more or less the hard distribution, and this is the leakage of the hard distribution. Essentially, you know, for all the ads, it's going to see, oh, in, in, in groups, it's going to, oh, same key, same key, same key, oh, a new key, but same key, same key, same key, and so on. And for, this is the brownish leakage, and for all the others, I'm going to see the actual keys, because forget I'm leaking the key, and the size of the response. And also I'm going to leak whether it's a key, if, if it's an add or a get, but this is encoded by the different colors. Okay, so this is the information tree of the hard distribution. We know how it has been explained several times. So, you know, each probe is assigned to the lowest common ancestor uh, of the node where it was performed and the node where it, this, that probe was last overwritten. And then at the end, I have something like this. One important thing, the, the information tree can be constructed in polynomial time, which means that the server sitting, an adversary sitting at the server can actually construct this tree. And it can use it to distinguish. So it better be the same for all distributions. And uh, so, so this is the information tree at one point. Each probe is assigned to at most one node. And now I'm going to tell you the neighbor hard distributions. The neighbor hard distribution are something like, I'm just switching i and j from the, first, from the initial phase to this. You can see, like, this one goes here and this one goes there. Okay? This, this is what I'm going to do. And now you are going to see that you see here, all the values that the gets are supposed to receive, they are all given here. And now, uh, yeah, and now it should be able to, to get this, it should extract all the entropy. The important thing is that when I do this warp, the leakage remains the same. That's the technical part that we have to design the hard distribution and the neighbor hard distribution to have the same leakage. And now for a node V, okay, this is a depiction, okay. So this is, a, so if I see the node V, you see these are the gets, and the gets get something from the, that was added in the left subtree. 
And all these reads that are done here, they all get assigned to the, to the node V. Why? Because essentially, the get operation in the right subtree must extract entropy from what was added in the left subtree. And there are only two ways to do this. One is through client memory, but client memory is very small, it's C, so C will get into the bound somehow. But then the, the, most of the entropy will have to go through cells that were overwritten in the right subtree. And if I, uh, sorry, in the left subtree, right? Because the get operations were in, so, so this is uh, read left here. So now, if I read in the, in the right subtree, I read something that was uh, overwritten in the left subtree of a node, then that probe is going to be assigned to that node. Yes, I'm almost there. But then each keyword receives k random values from a set of n to the epsilon, which means that the entropy is log of that, which is uh, omega of k log n bits. And this, is the, and this entropy has to go through either the C bits of the client memory or through the cells overwritten in the right subtree. And then using a compression algorithm, a compression argument, we can prove that for every V in the information tree that is not too deep and not too high, uh, because if it's very deep, there are very few, and then they can fit in client memory. So I cannot actually say anything about it. So it has to be high enough that everything that is in the left subtree cannot fit in client memory. And uh, eight is just for convenience of uh, computation. I, I know that the expected count is at least that much. But now, each, I, we have different hard distribution. And each hard distribution is bad with respect to one V. But they all have the leakage the same leakage as the original hard distribution. So the, the original distribution is like, it's like this insecure kid in high school that wants to be like all the guys, and he picks up a, lit, a bad habit from each individual friend. So he picks up smoking from one guy, you know, putting pineapple on pizza from another guy, and then he becomes a terrible person, right? It's, it's just the effect of bad company. Like if you, if you have teenage kids, you know what I'm talking about. So, so they are in the same league, they have the same leakage, like they are, in, they are in the same high school. And then it's going to pick up, it's not a bad kid, like the hard distribution. Like if you look at it in isolation, it, it seems very nice and very simple. You say, oh, why is it going to cause trouble? But it's, it's, it has the same leakage as all these guys. It's going to pick one bad node from each guy. And that means that most of the nodes for the hard distribution are going to be bad. And now you do the math and you get this and to the D. And now you just count the number of nodes that are depth D, which happen to be exactly these. And wrapping up, each probe contributes one to at most one count. So the sum of the counts is a lower bound the number of probes. Level D is two to the D level, so each level contributes n times k log n w. We have log n over C levels. Number of probes, uh, so it's going to be this. And this is to execute n times k add operations, and n gets operation, and each get operation returns k elements. So total number of responses is theta of n k, so this is the total cost, and amortized cost is at least this, which is the lower bound that I, I, I promised you, okay? So in the typical parameter regime, I just have one minute, so I'm finishing. In typical, uh, W is at least log N, and C is N to the alpha for some alpha smaller than one. So in that, like, if you do the math here, you know, this cancels and this becomes log n. The same for the other leakage. So what are the, conclusion, the conclusion? So we are in a mildly dynamic setting and I want something to be dynamic because I want two, two types of operation, one that reads and one that writes, so that I can 
uh, one transfer entropy from one to the other, from reading, from read and write. And I want two operations because I want to decouple the two uh, leakage pattern. And uh, we are going to, to log n. Like if we stick to static encrypted multimaps, this can be implemented with constant slowdown. Cuckoo hashing is the first thing that, but maybe there are more sophisticated techniques and Okay, this is a mildly dynamic because I'm not really relying on uh, deletion and uh, just adding values. And uh, this is it, yeah. Thank you.